Hi, Robert Curry, Innovative Air Solutions. We're continuing our talk about uh, duct and system design. Uh, last couple of videos, we've actually gone into heat loads. We want to go a little bit more in depth into that. Uh, again, this is one of these areas we could spend literally uh, hours upon hours discussing it. So I want to give you some basic overviews of it. Uh, not get too detailed in this uh, as this becomes a little bit, uh, be, becomes something for a little bit later on in your careers. Uh, hopefully you will have a very successful career in heating and air conditioning. So I want to go back to our example home that we have here where we talked earlier about uh, whatever air we leak out uh, in the attic space of this example, we're going to drag in from outside. Uh, this is this is also should be considered a part of your heat load calculations that you do in a home. Other factors uh, for heat load would be number one, the ceiling height. Uh, do we have eight foot ceilings, nine foot ceilings, ten foot, twelve foot? What kind of uh, of ceiling is it? Is it a vaulted ceiling? Uh, should be taken in consideration. Also in consideration with that is our le our level of insulation. Insulation is basically uh, uh, rated in R ratings which are resistance ratings, uh, R20, R30, R40. Also our exterior walls are all insulated, should be insulated to slow down the flow of heat. Again, as we talked earlier, everything in nature is gonna try and equalize. So the pressure outside of a home is trying to equal the pressure inside a home. The temperature outside a home is trying to equal the temperature inside the home. Everything is constantly moving through brick, through wood structures, through uh, insulation through sheetrock, drywall, wood paneling, whatever surfaces we have inside of our home, heat will transfer through that. Uh, the, the transfer, the hindrance of the transfer, uh, which is called a U-value, this is actually the transmissive, transmissivity of heat, uh, our R-values or our insulation try and oppose or slow down this heat transfer. It doesn't stop it, it merely slows it down. So insulation is a very important factor when determining heat loads in a home. If we're trying to go in and determine what size air conditioning system we need, uh, the heat load will help us do that, but we have to be accurate putting our data in. So all these things uh, are taken into consideration. Lights, uh, uh, kitchens with commercial cooking equipment uh, uh, can really be uh, a great generator of heat in a home. So we have to ask these questions going in if this is a new home construction. If it's an existing home, we also need to factor in uh, kitchen, uh, kitchen exhaust fans. We also need to factor in, uh, again, our clothes dryers, our, our stoves. All this needs to be factored in. The sun rising in the east, coming around the south and setting in the west will also affect our windows. So we need to know how much heat is being transferred through our windows. We also need to know window types. Depending on the, the surfaces or the the how the home is constructed, if it's a uh, concrete slab, as we have many of our homes are built on concrete slabs, that's taken into consideration because we don't have air that gets underneath the home uh, and doesn't affect our heat loads as much. Uh, but we also want to be just, we just want to be very, very careful when uh, doing a heat load on a home that we get this right because our duct is going to be sized based on our heat load and, our, and it's based on a heat gain and heat loss of a particular space. Hope this has not been too confusing for you, but we will move further uh, into heat loads and heat transfer uh, as we go forward. Robert Curry, Innovative Air Solutions, thank you for your time.